We want to determine whether the following series converge or diverge. We'll start off first with the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 2 over n times root n. I can factor out the 2 and rewrite the denominator as 1 over n to the 3 halves. Here the exponent is 3 halves, so we can think of this as a p series with p being 3 halves. And because this is greater than 1, it's going to converge. If it was less than or equal to 1, it would diverge. In the next example, we have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over 3n minus 2. So we know that this is very similar to 1 over n, and that's a harmonic series. So we expect this to diverge, but let's say if you want to be a little more precise with our work, we can apply the integral test, the integral test three conditions. We know that this is going to be continuous from n equals 1 to infinity because the only issue here is 3n minus 2 being 0, which means n would have to be 2 thirds. But because we're looking from 1 to infinity, that is not an issue. Therefore, it's continuous. It's going to be positive because 3n minus 2 looks something like this. When n is 1, it's going to be above the x-axis, so that is definitely positive. So 1 over a positive number is positive. And this is decreasing because the denominator is much bigger than the numerator. So we can apply the integral test. We'll have 1 to infinity, 1 over 3n minus 2 dn. So for this, you can use uh, u substitution if you want, or you can treat it as, uh, well, I guess you, you can use u substitution in your head. If you let u be 3n minus 2, du would have to be 3. So you would have to take that out. Instead of multiplying by 3, the train rule, we have to undo that by dividing it. And hopefully you're convinced that this is the antiderivative. As n approaches infinity, we know that a one-third ln of 3n minus 2 also approaches infinity. So this series would have to diverge since the integral is not finite. Next sum is from n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over n times the fourth root of n. This one I can rewrite it as 1 over n to the 5 fourths. This is going to be a p-series with the exponent being 5 fourths. And we know for the p-series that if p is greater than 1, it's going to converge. And if p is less than or equal to 1, it's diverging. So therefore, since p is 5 fourths, it's going to converge. Last one, we have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, 2 thirds to the n. This is a geometric series with r equals 2 thirds. For a geometric series, if r is between negative 1 and 1, we know it's going to converge. Otherwise, it's going to diverge. And because r is in this range, it's definitely going to converge.